Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related to this particular examination. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are continuing ahead with the remaining questions from the chapter one and shall be discussing on things related to what could be the possible questions from the uh, Agile and other concepts which are yet pending from this particular chapter. Let's move on. The next question we have for you is question number 26. It says, uh, which of the following is not anticipated by the tester while applying error guessing? So error guessing is all about intuitions and anticipations where we guess the error and try to test the system. But the question is about which one of the following is not an anticipation. Let's move on to the options here because now we don't have any context and we shall only look at the options to conclude about it. So option A says uh, the developer misunderstood the formula in the user story for calculating the interest. So this looks a very good option. Uh, the reason is, uh, of course, uh, this is an example of anticipations of the developer's error because developers do tend to perform these type of mistakes and I can always take this into account that where my developer can go wrong in their practice or pattern and many other reasons for that. Option B says the developer wrote some equation like FA is equal to A multiplied by one plus R raised to N uh, in the brackets instead of FA is equal to A multiplied by sum of A one plus IR, okay, it's IR not one R, raised to overall power raised to N and uh, in the source code. So there's an equation difference and uh, this certainly uh, is another example of anticipating the defect because we know uh, if you remember in the equivalence partition and boundary value analysis we quite often told you that generally a developer can go wrong in writing the equations writing the operators so whenever we have equations and operators we must always look forward to see it as one of the way by which the developer can go wrong okay and the next option we have is option c and option C says the developer missed the seminar on new compound interest rate legislation. See, attending seminar and workshops are something which are considered to be pretty casual. And it's not uh, necessary that uh, this could be one of the anticipation that why the developer would go wrong. So attending or missing a seminar could not be a common reason. However, this could be a root cause that, for example, tomorrow I find a defect and then we do a RCA, we can correlate and deep dive and find that, okay, just because a person missed a particular workshop or particular seminar, this resulted into a defect. But this reason is neither an error, not a failure, not a defect, right? So that's exactly what we mean to say when I say such things, that seminars are not a prediction or anticipations to conduct a test, okay? So this is not a reason for that. Let's move on to the next option. The option D says, the accuracy of the interest calculated by the system is not precise enough. That indeed is a good example of anticipating a failure because uh, based on the experience of previous systems in the application domain or the past experience of what kind of mistakes the developer would have made could be a good source of anticipation that where exactly should I guess the errors exist. So that makes my job very simple and very to the point that the right answer to this particular question is C, the developer missed the seminar on new compound interest rate legislation is not an anticipation to be made by the tester to guess the errors, right? So sometimes some funny options would also be the right answer, subjected, the question is well understood. So this was about not. So of course, seminar, attending a seminar or missing a seminar is not a reason. Let's move on to the next question. Number, the next question is number 27. And it says, which of the following is true about exploratory testing? Again, recall all the knowledge what you have about exploratory testing. We should give you the context that what we do in exploratory and what are the reporting methods, what documentation we have, and as a tester, what exactly we do. So that would make our context and job very much easier to come to the conclusion. Sorry about the background noise. I can't help it. It's a festival time and uh, I have a target to close this playlist as soon as possible for you because uh, you have been uh, you know asking me several times that when this playlist will be completed so that we can write the exam so sorry about that so the option a says the test cases are designed before the exploratory testing session starts 
test cases are designed before the exploratory testing session starts is uh, certainly uh, you know uh, one of the activity because alongside the test analysis and uh, exploratory test sessions these are certainly conducted in parallel and uh, this looks like a true now am i reading something wrong here which of the following is true about exploratory testing test cases are designed before no 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 sorry my bad i was reading it with different context it's not created before okay it's a simultaneous activity which we generally tend to create in parallel that means the test cases are written at a high level but in parallel to the execution that means at the time before we execute we just go and write it right so it's not a preparatory activity not a pre-planned test case design rather it is a simultaneous activity so a is wrong b says uh, the tester can perform test execution but cannot perform test design remember one thing test design is a phase which talks about writing test cases it's not necessary when you do it so it's a activity or it's more of like a phase that are you doing test design in exploratory testing so many people have that illusion or misunderstanding that in exploratory testing we don't create test cases so test design phase is not required it is there but it's just that the positioning of the test design is differently differently operated that means during the execution phase itself we will parallelly simultaneously design the test so this design is absolutely there okay so it's not that uh, it is not there so let's move to option c exploratory testing results are good predictors of the number of remaining defects see again uh, exploratory testing could be always taken into account to understand the confidence of the tester and also can anticipate that what number of test defects might be remaining but again this is a guess it can be less it can be more but it totally depends on the experience of the tester if experience doesn't feel confident i cannot take this for a standard ter you know terminology or standard characteristic of exploratory that exploratory helps me to determine that what is the remaining number of defects so that's again is something which i cannot consider let's move to option d option d says during exploratory testing the tester may use black box test technique i'm pretty much sure most of you would say how is this even possible but let me tell you it is just that it is informal testing but if required you think that by using uh, equivalence partition you can reduce your number of test cases i may not be writing formal test cases on it but i can certainly create classes and partitions and pick the values from there to do this dynamic execution right so it's not a restriction that i cannot blend exploratory with the black box if you remember we had a topic which said that it if required we can always combine techniques to get to the right answer or get to the right coverage so yes with that justification being said to the point the right answer for this particular question is d that is during exploratory testing the tester may use black box test techniques as well if he thinks or she thinks that it is uh, important to derive the minimum number of test cases however we will not be formalizing the test cases but techniques can be used anywhere okay let's move on to the next question the uh, question number 28 it says which collaborative user story writing practice enables the team to achieve a collective understanding of what needs to be delivered so first of all they already told you that it's a user story activity like collective user story writing but which activity in that so if you remember the topic if i just help you to recall in collaborative user story writing the understanding is achieved from something between three c's so there are three c's which we understood car conversation and confirmation in collaborative user story writing these three c's represent the card has a dedicated a card for each story and at the same time if i talk about conversation which is a discussion which helps people to ask their questions understand what exactly needs to be implemented and what exactly needs to be done in terms of scope of the story etc and same way the confirmation is about acceptance criteria where we determine what are the key criteria to be achieved in order to uh, meet the goals so this is this question is more about the three c's concept which we have covered there that is card conversation and confirmation so let's look at the options option a says planning poker of course you can stop here itself but uh, as a formality let me complete that so uh, planning poker so that a team can achieve consensus on the effort needed to implement a user story 
Planning POCO, straightforward is an estimation technique and helps you to estimate the effort to be applied for a particular piece of work. So it's not a method to understand the story. Option B says a review. Uh, again, review is not something what we can do so that a team can detect inconsistency and contradiction in a user story. Review has uh, nothing to do with the understanding. And moreover, it's not an activity which is performed in the Agile, right? However, we have some informal reviews, but we have a better name for it, which we call it as conversation. So option C says iteration planning, which is again uh, another ceremony so that user stories with the highest business value for a customer can be prioritized for implementation. If you remember, iteration planning is a phase where we pick up items from the product backlog to that of the iteration backlog. And here we only select the work to be done in a particular sprint or particular iteration, but it's not a face or not an activity, not a ceremony, which helps you understand these stories, okay? But again, if you correlate this with the real world scenarios, in real world, we try to understand a lot of stories during sprint planning itself, but don't connect the dot to something what we do in the real world, because we are doing something wrong. This is sub something which has to be understood while writing the story itself, but we have a different protocol in the real world, so don't connect the dot, okay? Because that's going to be wrong. And option D here says uh, conversation, which we have been waiting for, so that the team members can understand how the software will be used, which completely makes sense that what exactly is needed as a part of collaborative user story writing to understand the story from the three C's concept. So put together, the right answer for this particular question is D, that is conversation, so that team members can understand uh, how the software will be used. Okay, so without wasting much of our time, let's quickly move on to the last question of this particular chapter. And that is question number 29. Uh, it's a long story, uh, trying to fit. So I've reduced the font. Sorry about that. But otherwise, you will never see the whole question together. You have, a, you have just started test designing test cases for the following user story. The user story says, as a customer, I want to be able to filter search results by price range so that I can find products within my budget more easily. And this is uh, simply relatable to anything what we do today in terms of shopping on Amazon or Flipkart or any other website. Further to add, there are also some acceptance criteria given to us. One, the filter should work for all versions of the application from uh, version 3.0 upwards. Okay, that's fine. The filter should allow the customer to set a price range with a minimum and a maximum price. And three, the search result should update dynamically as the customer adjusts the price range filter. So pretty much realistic. This is how our real-time applications also work. First of all, we have a price-based filter and uh, we get the freedom to define the minimum and maximum. And if you just drag and drop that simple slider, it dynamically shows the product according to the filter adjusted. So what's the question? The question says, uh, which of, uh, so in all test cases, the precondition is as follows. There are only two products available right now, that is product A and B, where cost of the product A is $100 and product B costs $110. So which of the following is the best example of a test case for this user story? So I think we need to keep it very simple and straightforward here. They've just given you there are two products and the cost is also very standard, that is 100 and 200, uh, 110. So we will have to just find that test, okay, in the given options, which fulfills these acceptance criteria along with the given product details itself. Okay, so you will find many tests which are doing good job, but point is they are either not fulfilling the criteria or they are not as per the product details provided to you. So we just have to filter them out, nothing else. Okay, so let's start with the option A. Option A says uh, enter a web page and set filter to show prices between 90 and 100. Okay, expected result should show product A only. Then set maximum price to 110, covering the slider, okay? An expected result now shows both product, that is A and B. Look at this interesting thing. First, I can set the minimum and maximum, covering the uh, second criteria. And then I can even talk about slider, which is increasing to 110, which would also cover the second product in the next scenario. And first step was to talk about setting a filter which covers all the three criteria listed here. Let's go to option B. Option B says enter web page, 
expected result the default minimum and maximum price are 100 and 110 hold on here it nowhere says that the default price is preset okay or even if it is then it should be defined there right so in my examination or this particular question it nowhere says that there should be a default preset value which should be available okay so certainly that's not a valid test and i may not have to waste my time talking about it however add product c to stock with price 120 refresh the client's web page expected result the default maximum price change to 120 see this is all out of the context the user story doesn't talk about it and doesn't have an exit or acceptance criteria related to that so b can be ruled out option c says enter web page and set a filter to show prices between 90 to 115 good that is possible and this should result in showing both product a and b change currency from usd to euro expected result the filter range changes correctly to euro uh, values and uh, according to the current exchange rate hold on again did the did we have anywhere written that we are talking about changing the currency as one of the functionality in this particular story it is a good test but for sorry about that distraction so it is a good test but only if the user story is talking about change of the currency but here we are just uh, limited to filter and also we are limited to a fixed set of products so i cannot take this into account and finally option d which says uh, enter web page with three different browser edge chrome opera and each browser set filter between 90 to 100 expected result include both product a and b and the results layout is same in the three browsers again this is more of like a compatibility or cross bar cross browser testing however the story is not talking about that and it's not one of our scope item so i may not just consider this into our consideration so quickly before any more disturbance happens very simple and to the point the right answer for this particular question is a that is enter web page and set the filter to show prices between 90 to 100 so we are setting it up expected result it should show only product a then set the maximum price by sliding to 110 and expected result it should show both product a and b so that's how we need to have patience and attention to detail in these type of questions the questions which are a little longer trust me that is what is created to consume your time and the moment you spend more time you just are left over with limited time and you cannot answer all the questions which you even know very well so try to manage your time very well and try to save your time for the complicated ones try to push the complicated ones to a later point of time if possible so that you can handle them easily and at least be you know solving the ones which are straightforward the reason is even if you run out of time in worst situation or you go wrong with these complicated questions you would have peacefully answered at least you know 30 questions which would still safeguard you with the passing criteria and it's not that the rest 10 questions are all complicated and you will go wrong with them absolutely right so you will at least get another few marks from there as well to back up so always have a strategy defined well in advance well in advance so that you can have everything uh, you know well organized and you can tackle everything within the given time queue right so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understand the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning Thank you.